Hello and welcome to Scripting for Artists. My name is Sibren and in this episode we will be looking at linking of assets. Because there is a lot more code in this episode than in previous ones and the code is getting complex for as well, I've put the final add-on in a link in the video description so you can download that and use that as a reference while you're watching this video. Now we'll go to Blender Cloud to take a look at the Settlers project. It's a public project, so you don't need a Blender Cloud subscription to access this, and it will serve as a nice example for this episode of Scripting for Artists. I've also put a link to the project in the video description. Here you see an animation on Blender Cloud of the Settlers project. As is typical for such animation projects, each scene has a set, and each set consists of assets, in this case like rocks and plants. Here on the left you can see in their set development different blend files for the rock assets and for the cacti assets. They're all linked into the environment file. Here you can download the desert file. Just click on the download button here and this will give you the following files. Here I've unpacked the files into Ulente Desert. It has an ENVS a nodes and a sets directory. The ENVS directory has the environment assets, so the desert plants and the rocks. Nodes has some shaders, we won't be looking into those, and in sets you will find lentedesert.blend. I've already created the JSON file that we're going to use, of course, in the preparation for this video. And we have a new set.blend, which we're going to build up automatically from scratch. Now, before we start automating things, it's always good to take a look at Blender itself and manually go through the steps that you want your script to perform. So typically you would go to File and then Link, you would go to the environment assets, say rocks. And there we have collections that we want to link in. The naming is as follows. You have EN dash, which stands for environment asset. And then there is a name and a number. So we want to have all the EN rocks. We want to have all the EN smooth. EN rocks is like the entire thing. Um, we don't want that one. One thing you can already see is that all the collections have a certain prefix. This we can use in our script so that it will automatically pick up the right ones. So en rock underscore s underscore, that will work for the first set. And en rock underscore smooth underscore will work for the second set. Now let's just link in one of those. You click link and automatically Blender instances this into the scene. If we want to link this into our scene ourselves in our script, we have to investigate further into what this actually is. So what we have here is an object, and it's actually an empty object with instancing set to collection, instancing a collection from rocks.blend. Furthermore, the empty is of course part of the scene collection, and that is why it appears in our scene. So this is what we have to do. We have to link in the collection from the rocks.blend into the current blend file, then we have to create an empty, and that empty will instance that collection into our scene. Now, contrary to what we did before, we're not going to use this link operator. It's very hard to use from Python, and there is a much better way to do this. If you go to help, Python API reference, and then search for BPy data libraries, you find it's a library data blocks of type BPy data libraries. Click on that, and here you will get to the load function. So this is what we're going to use, bpy.data.libraries.load. This takes a file path, it takes a link parameter that can be set to true if you want to link, which is what we want to do. Otherwise, it would append to the current file. Relative should be true if the file path is to be interpreted as relative to the current blend file. Here are some examples of how to use this function. The function actually acts as a context manager, which means that you use it with a with statement. A with statement has an indented body. So you have the width, then you have an expression here, then you have a colon again, like we know from the if and the while, etc. And then again, you have a bit of code that is indented, that is called the body of the width statement. Now, the width statement does something before it enters the body, and then it does something else when it exits the body. You can use this for all kinds of things, like opening file and reading the content, and then making sure that when that with statement is over, the file is automatically closed again, cleaning up as you go. In this case, it loads the blend file, and it exposes the contents of that blend file in data from. And then you can assign to data to whatever data blocks you want to link from that blend file. So the data from and data to, they look pretty similar to the bpy.data that you already know. So it has a dot scenes, dot object, dot collections, etc. The only difference is that they're not really objects or scenes or collections, they're just lists of names. So we can act based on the name of the scene, the name of the collection, the name of the object, and whatever names we give to data2, 
will be finally imported when the width statement is over. Here in this example, it appends the scene called scene to the current blend file. It appends because the default for link is false, so that's the default behavior. There's no link parameter given, so it will append. Down here you'll see an example with link is true, so that will link instead of appending. The data 2.scenes.meshes.objects, etc. are lists, like we've seen before. So we can also append things to them. Similar with data from, data from.collections is also a list of collection names. So we can loop over those. This means that we can loop over the collections, look at their name, see if they're prefixed with that prefix that we wanted to have, and if so, we append them to the data 2collections list. Now let's go back to Blender and write some code to explore this a little bit and see how it behaves. So we're back at Blender and this will all look pretty familiar by now. We're importing BPy, we set a file path, and because I've saved this file inside the sets directory, we have to go one directory up, then to envs, and then we have rocks.blend. The rest is pretty similar to the example that we've seen already. So we have with BPy data libraries load, then the file path and link equals true because we want a link, and then we have as data from comma data to as we expected. Now, all we do here is print data from dot collections, just to get a peek on what is exactly in there for our particular file. Click play, and then we go to the terminal where we started Blender. If you're on Windows, you can go to Window and then Toggle System Console in order to see this. Here we see that list of collection names, just like we saw in Blender itself when we manually went through all the steps. Now, even though we didn't actually link anything from that Blend file yet, it did have some effect. If you look at the outliner, you can see that it did load the rocks.blend file that we wanted. So it's already doing something. Now we have our list of names. Let's do some filtering on the names that we find interesting and actually link those into the current blend file. For this, let's first determine our prefix. So remember, we had two sets of rocks. Let's just focus on one now and then we'll do the other later. And that started with en rocks underscore s underscore. We can remove this print and just say for collection name in data from dot collections. If it doesn't start with our prefix, we're not interested, so we skip them by using the continue keyword. This will just tell the for loop to go to the next element and skip the rest of the body. In other cases though, we have the prefix and that means we have to tell Blender that we actually want to link this collection. This means we have to do something .data collections, and since it's a list, we can append to it. Let's give this a try. This all worked fine. And now we can open this file in the outliner, and we can see that these collections have been added to it. These are exactly the collections that we wanted, and all the collections that we didn't want are not here, so our code is doing the right thing. Now all that's left is to create an empty that instances these collections and then link those empties into a scene collection. There is something special about this data too. Within the body of the width, data2.collections is a list of names. But once the width body is done and bpydatalibraries.load has actually loaded what we needed, data2.collections is no longer a list of collection names, it's actually a list of the collections that were linked in. So what we can do is loop over them. Now here call is first the first collection, then the second collection, etc. Now let's create an empty. It should be named after the collection, and it shouldn't have any data. This way Blender understands that this object should be an empty and not a camera or a mesh or anything else. Now we have to set some properties, and let's take a look at what those are. So just to test, I add an empty empty. So I have to set this one, which is object.instance type. And of course, we have to set the collection to one of the collections. And there you have it. This is all we need to do. So hover over here and you see it's instance collection. So we have to set instance underscore type and instance underscore collection. I'm guessing that instance underscore type will have to have the value collection. But we can always look that up, of course. And there you have it. The instance type should be set to collection in capitals. So let's just copy this. 
and then we have that. And instance collection is, of course, the collection that we want to instance, which is call. This will create the empty, but it's not yet part of our scene. Now, I think it's nice to create a special collection to have all these empties rather than having them at the top level. So before we start doing this, we want to make sure that that collection exists. Scene is BPI context scene. Later, when we change this into an operator that does all the work, of course, we will use context.scene and not bpi.context.scene. But for now, this will suffice. Let's say that the collection that we want to link everything to should be called environment. Now, I want to create this collection, but only if it doesn't exist yet. The easiest way to do this is just to act as if it already exists and then see what error occurs when it doesn't exist yet, and then simply handle that case. So let's do the simple thing first. Let's say it already exists. Then we can access this collection through the scene. like this, and it will just give us a collection. Now, if it doesn't exist yet, this will raise a key error. Now we have the information that we need. Let's go back to the code. As we've done before, we want to use try and accept. So we tell Python, try this for us. And if this fails, We'll have to create a new collection. And then once that collection is created, we have to add it to the scene collection. So now this code will just use the existing collection if it's there and create a new one if it isn't. Now that we have the collection we want to link to, we can do the, just that. And this will link our empty. You can see that running now took considerably longer, and here we have all our assets linked into the file. They're all empties, they're all inside the environment collection, and we don't have anything we don't want to have. Now as a final touch, let's line up all the empties in one line along the x-axis so that they're nicely spread out and not all lumped in one spot. For that, we have to keep track of the x-location of the previous empty, so let's just start at zero. And let's give every empty to Blender units. Now that they're linked to our scene, we can set their location. And then we can increment location X by step X so that the next empty will use the next location. Let's delete all the empties, run the script again. And there they are all neatly lined up. Our script is working, but it's very limited. If we want to load assets with a different prefix, we have to go in, change this prefix in the source code, run the script again. If we want to load from a different blend file, we have to do that again. If we want to link the empties into a different scene collection, again, we have to edit the script and run it again. It would be much nicer if we had a file that contained all this information. It contains which blend files to use, which prefixes to use, which collections to link into. We can then put our code into an add-on that doesn't need to change, and all our project specifics go into a separate file. Before we do that though, let's copy our code, put it into a separate Python file, and shuffle some code around into separate functions so that we can work with some higher level building blocks instead of looking at one big blob of code all the time. So let's copy what we have now and go to the add-on I already prepared. We've seen this a bunch of times. It's just a Python file with a BL info. We import bpy. I've already added the operator with an empty execute function, so we'll fill that out. It is added to the import menu so that we can just do file import and then load stuff from JSON. And we have the Blender classes where we have the operator class and the register and unregister functions that we've seen before. So above all of that, let's paste the code with that we just copied and let's turn this into some functions. So there's a few things going on here at the same time. This first bit is linking data into the current blend file. 
then we have some code that creates a collection for us if it doesn't exist yet. So actually that's quite a different thing, so that can be moved into a different function. Then we loop over all the collections that we linked into the blend file, so this actually belongs to the first bit of code. So let's take this part out and start writing a separate function for it. Let's call it ensure collection because it ensures that the collection exists. It needs access to the scene. It needs to know the collection name, of course. And then we declare that it will return the collection. Let's move our code in here. And change that to collection name. Now all we have to do is return the link to collection and then this function is done. Now we have the other bit of code to look into. Let's call this function link to scene. It will take the file path as a parameter instead of having it hard coded here. Similarly, it will take a prefix as a parameter instead of hard coding it here. Then we have the link to, which is a collection, and then the location Y. Later on, we will be linking multiple sets of assets from multiple blend files, and then having them in different rows is kind of nice. So that is why I added a location Y parameter here as well. Now the rest of the code needs to be indented because it needs to be part of the function. And of course, now we also have to set the Y location. So we can do that like this. Now that we have our two functions, we can just call these from our operator still with the same hard-coded values that we used before, so that at least we can see that they're working. So first of all, we have to create the link to collection. And then we can call link to scene with the same file path and the same prefix as we used before, then the collection, then the collection we want to link to and let's just use zero as the Y location for now. Now, of course, you have to enable your add-on. You know how that's done. Now you have to install and enable your add-on. If you want to have a refresher on how that is done, look for the scripting for artists chapter called From Script to Add-on. There it's all explained. Now you go to File, Import, Link Assets from JSON, and you can see that everything works as expected. Now it's time to look at the JSON file that I've mentioned a couple of times already. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it's quite a common file format. It's not the easiest to work with, but it is doable and is not that complex. And Python has built-in support for parsing those files and for saving those files. So it's rather convenient file format for to use for our case. Here you see a high-level overview of what that file looks like. You have curly braces, want to open one to close the file, and within the curly braces you have what is basically a Python dictionary. So it's a name between quotes, and that name has a value. In this case, it's another dictionary. So here we say these are our collections, and we want to have two collections. We want to have rocks, and we want to have plants. And within each, we say link, which will contain a list of files and prefixes that we want to link into the scene, into this collection. So here you see a list of things. It has the same notation as Python, so with these blocky parentheses kind of things. And within it, we have a list of, in this case, two dictionaries again. Each dictionary has a file, and it has a prefix of all the collections to link in from that file. We do something similar for the plants. We have a link, and then again, file prefix, file prefix, file prefix. In this case, there are three of them even. Now, we could have removed this link and put this information directly into plants, but I, I always like to have things a little bit more explicit, and this will also give you a chance later if you want to add something extra to it. Maybe, uh, maybe you want to have something visible by default or not, or maybe you want to enable only in certain view layers or not. By having this under a link key, you can add multiple keys later for your own workflow. For now, let's keep it simple and write some code that loads this file then turns it into Python data structure that we can use. So let's comment out these two lines. We'll just leave them sticking around as a reference for us later. First, we have to load the JSON file, and for that we need to have the JSON module. This is built into Python, so we can just do import JSON, and then we have access to it. I think it's a nice touch to have the JSON file sitting next to the blend file, which means that we want to write it in slash slash notation, which means we have to translate the file first. 
This can be done by passing the slash slash ss.json file name through bpy.path.appspath, and this will take care of that. So now all we need to do is open the file and feed it to the JSON library. I will be copy pasting some code instead of typing it all because now we have a lot of Python code that will do auto completion and show information pop-ups and everything because I scaled up my editor for this video is going to block a lot of things and be more distracting than anything. So this is how you open a file. You can say with open JSON file name as in file and this will open the file for reading and once the with statement is done, it will close it again, making sure that we don't leave any open file handles around. On Linux, this is not such an issue, but on Windows, this is problematic because if the file is open by one program, another program won't be able to read or write to that file. You won't even be able to delete the file. So always make sure that you close a file after you have opened it, and the with statement is a perfect way to do that. After we've opened the file, we can pass it to json.load, which takes the file as a first parameter, and this will load the file and parse it into a Python data structure. This means that link info here is a dictionary. If you want to see exactly what's in there, you can use a print statement, run the code, and then you can see for yourself. So going back to our JSON file, we know that it represents a dictionary with one key called collections, which contains another dictionary. So let's see how we access this in Python. Here we take the link info dict, we get the key collections and we can loop over this by taking key value pairs. And for this, we use the dot items function. Dot items on a dictionary gives us something that we can loop over with a for loop and it will get you pairs of the key and the value. In our case, it will give us rocks with that dictionary and then plants with the second dictionary. So call name is first rocks and call info is its dictionary. And then on the second iteration, call name is plants and then call info is the plants dictionary. So the first thing we have to do is ensure that this collection actually exists. We have a function for that. So let's move that code and put it here. And instead of having environment as a hard coded collection, we of course take the collection name from the JSON file. Now might also be a good time to just save your file, reload it in Blender, and see that it actually creates those collections for you, just as a first step to see that that is working. And also run it twice to see that it still works when the collections already exist. So the next thing we have to do is take a look at that link key and the list that is in there. So call info link will give us this list. And of course, because it's a list, we can just loop over it and it will give us that dictionary with a file and a prefix. Let's make it a little bit easier for us and take the file and the prefix keys and store their values in these variables. So for the first iteration, file path will be this path and this prefix will be this prefix. What is left now is to link everything to the scene but instead of using our hard-coded file path, we take the file path from the JSON file and the same for the prefix. Now we have to make sure that the Y location is increased and not everything ends up at Y0. So we can do the same thing for this as we've done before with the X location. We can start location Y at zero and then pass that here. After this is done, all we need to do is increment the Y location with the step size, and that's it. Let's go back to Blender and see it in action. Let's delete everything there was, including the collection. And there it is. We have rocks, we have plants, and everything is there in the file for you to start dressing up your set. Now, there's one final touch. Let's say the asset files change and something new was added. This is not automatically loaded into this file. If we rerun the operator again, it will create all the empties again, including the ones that already exist in the file. Let's add a little filter to the creation of the empties so that our code doesn't try to recreate an empty if it's already there. For this, we have to go to the link to scene function. Linking things that are already linked is fine. Blender will skip these automatically for us. So it's really only the creation of the empties that we need to worry about. So here we are at the line that creates the new empty. So before this, we want to have our check. This I think is a nice approach. 
the collection name is going to be used as the empty name as well. So if the collection name already exists in link2.objects, we know that the empty is already there and we can just skip it. So I'll move this as it away. So if we should not see anything new pop up here. And of course, you can also see it here in the outliner that these numbers shouldn't increase because everything has already been loaded. And there you have it. It all works fine. So this is it for this episode of Scripting for Artists. Of course, this is just a start, but you can imagine that things get pretty powerful when you can store information into a JSON file, load that into Blender, and use that to instantiate certain collections. Of course, collections can also consist of linked collections. So the set that you're building with this tool can also be a collection that you instantiate into a shot file, for example. So I'll leave that up to your imagination and your workflow. For now, this is it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will see you soon.